Yo, sup, swag, man. You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, Keon Laura, a.k.a. KL Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, we about to react to Microphone, man. Former NFL star explains how the NFL is rigged, man. <sighs> Let's check it out. I ain't gonna do too much talking, man. Did you memorize those before the season started, or would you go and rehearse the script before every game? Uh, WWF, so it's like, yeah, we know what's gonna happen. You still got fun, so. Let me tell you something about this channel. We're unplugged from the Matrix. We're not sheeple or sheep. We're all very aware of what's going on, and we're starting to put the clues all together to really get to the bottom of this theory. And we have definitive evidence from a former all-pro NFL player and a three-time pro bowler and one of the most dominant running backs. Aaron Foster. In the 2010s. Not going to attest to this. So before we get Damn. to the content, make sure you drop, like, subscribe, and and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We are on a mission to pass my basketball channel, the Flight Mike and subscribers. They were about 10k subs away. And now that we get all that we out of the way, we're trying to hit 10k. We're trying to hit 10k, man. We're on a journey, man. Trying to get like Flight Mike, man. Trying to get like microphone, bro. We gonna hit it too, man. All the ground, all the journey, bro. We gonna get it, bro. Best sports channel on YouTube, man. Reaction channel? Usually when this happens, we all make bank. Prize picks and I understand you gotta get paid, my boy. But man, we gotta skip this. My niggas gotta find out what's going on with the NFL really rig. Everybody, if you recall, a couple days ago, I made a video on the AFC Championship game. As a diehard Cincinnati Bengals fan, I made it my mission to do everything I possibly could to prove that that game was rigged in the favor of the Kansas City Chiefs because the NFL wants to see the Kansas City Chiefs in a Super Bowl for the third time in the past five years because that would be good for ratings. They want to see the Kelsey brothers face off against each other. They want to see Andy Reid's redemption versus his former team. They wanted to see two top seeds go up against each other and the potential first place and second place in MVP voting to face off against each other. They did it! for the ratings. And in that video, I brought you multiple instances of why one would think that the game was rigged, primarily due to horrific officiating. And we should make a discrepancy between horrific officiating and rigged games. And then we put it all to rest because Damn. for the most part, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. The Super Bowl is set and honestly, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be an awesome Super Bowl. We also brought proofs as to why the game wasn't rigged. So if you missed that video, make sure you check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the end screen. Everything was put to rest until a couple of days ago when a former NFL All-Pro and Pro Bowl running back who led the league in touchdowns on two separate occasions said that the NFL elaborately scripts their games. So for those of you guys that don't know who Arian Foster is, he's actually one of the coolest stories in NFL history. One of the most dominant undrafted free agents of the 2010s without a doubt, Arian Foster burst on the scene in 2010 for the Houston Texans and led the league in rushing yards and rushing TDs. Very much the type of guy that won you your fantasy football league if you happen to pick him up that year. To give you an idea of how dominant he was, in 2010, he rushed for 1,616 rushing yards and 16 touchdowns. That's 101 yards per game, to give you an idea. So in one year, Damn. he went from undrafted running back to all-pro in 2010. In 2011, he would once again make the all-pro team, this time on the second team, because he wasn't able to play the full slate of games. He missed three games, but still rushed for 1,000. 1,224 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. In 2012, he would have more luck rushing for 1,424 rushing yards and 15 touchdowns. And he'll get selected to his third straight All-Pro team and would lead the league in rushing touchdowns once again. I ain't gonna lie, he was going dumb. You know how it is for running backs, man. Especially in those days, eventually the wheels start falling off. And in 2013, he started to see some of that with Arian Foster dealing with injuries. 2014 was his last season where he was very productive, rushing Damn. for 1,000 246 rushing yards and eight touchdowns and then in 2015 he would rupture his Achilles because the script writers told him so. So what do I mean by that? Well, Arian Foster gave us a deep dive into how the NFL truly works on the Macro Dosing podcast. So take a look at this. Uh, Arian was telling me about how the NFL is rigged and how every year he used to give a script yeah. Day one of training camp, he would get dropped off at his locker, mm -hmm. and you would have to, you know, it was like week one you'll do this, week two you're gonna have a hamstring injury, week three this is gonna happen, yeah. week four you're gonna Damn. have three touchdowns, mm -hmm. and so then you just have to. Did you memorize those 
before the season started, or would you go and rehearse the script before every game? Uh, we're really dedicated to it. So pretty much, if you're not following along, they're claiming that in the beginning of every season, there'd be a script dropped off at each and every team's headquarters. That would tell you everything that was supposed to go down during the season. Who was going to get injured? Who was going to win MVP? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? What team that had high expectations ended up falling off? The Dallas Cowboys falling short of expectations yet again. Stuff like that. And Arian goes into detail as to how they would prepare for the upcoming season. And he would even tell you what practices were truly for. It wasn't to practice your athletic ability, by the way. Check this out. That's what practice was about. It was about practicing the script. This is what goes on, and this is what we have to do mm -hmm. in order to. Yeah. And this referee is going to miss this call. Damn. Because they hate you yeah. and they love the Colts. Yeah, that sort like, of thing. Uh, WWF, so it's like, you yeah, know, we know what's going to happen, but you still got to put on a show. Yeah. What did you think when you got the script in 2016 that said your career was going to fall off a cliff when you stopped believing in God? That was 2015. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I like at the end of this clip how someone calls him out and says, What did you think about the end of 2016 when your career fell off a cliff? Theoretically, both 2015 and Damn. 2016 were horrible years for Arian Foster. In 2015, that's crazy. Achilles against the Miami Dolphins, and I guess the Dolphins felt bad because they would sign Arian Foster in 2016. After he ruptured his Achilles, he would play like four games with them, and then that would be it. I'll tell you this. Although there are moments where I think the NFL storylines are so freaking good that they have to be scripted, and I was telling you, I was texting my buddy Jamari about this recently, because like the storylines were getting so freaking good that I felt like there had to have been a hand in this. Ready? Bro, that's great. Wow. <laughs> Or did I already know that? Hey, can you send me that? No, actually, I did it. That's crazy. Though. Because I'm also covering the NBA, by the way. And if you compare our channels, slight mic to microphone, I upload significantly more to I this did my channel wrong, because wrong. there's way more going on in the NFL as opposed to the NBA. Whereas the NBA had significant storylines in the earlier 2010s. So, like, a part of me was starting to think that, wow, the NFL is really doing a good job leveraging its drama in order to make things entertaining. I don't fully believe this in my core, of course. I just felt like there were some really good storylines in the NFL recently that I don't even think you could even script it to be that good. What Arian Foster's suggesting is the NFL is scripted like WWE style from the very beginning. Wow, that's crazy. You practice, you practice everything you're supposed to do. You're not practicing how to catch a football or how to improve your pass rushing. You're not studying the playbook either. Now, wow. do I take this seriously? Eh, not really. I yeah. think he just took the narrative of the NFL is rigged and ran away with it to generate a viral clip and more power Probably. to him. I mean, this was the perfect time to drop some content like this. I don't even think the NFL like rigs games directly, to be honest, because if yeah. the NFL was truly rigged, last year you would see the Kansas City Chiefs facing off against the LA Rams as opposed to the LA Rams facing off against the it's Cincinnati true. Bengals in the Super Bowl. You remember the last time the LA Rams faced off against the Kansas City Chiefs in the regular season, it produced one of the greatest football games of all time. They did. The most high scoring that games game of all crazy, time. Too. So if the NFL really wanted to fix games, don't you think that would have been the Super Bowl last year? That's what it usually comes back to for me. Now, I will tell yeah, you what this Patriots. did give us. It gave us remarkable memes in regards to the NFL, because now you're getting this viral meme of NFL players reading their script. And I'll take you through some of my favorite ones. This one of Jason Pierre-Paul reading the 2015 script is absolutely <laughs> insane. For those of you guys that don't know, that's the year that Jason Pierre-Paul would blow his fingers off while lighting fireworks on the 4th of July. I really could empathize with this meme about the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> you killing me, man! <laughs> I think this was a little too soon, but you let me know what you think about this one that features Tua. Oh, God damn it. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is so funny. Up. <laughs> and I think the entire NFL community agrees that probably the best meme on this topic out of all memes is this one with Michael Vick. <laughs> Oh, damn that dog. But of course, the NFL community had to roast the living hell out of the Atlanta Falcons for Tom Brady making that 28 to 3 comeback in Super Bowl 51. So at the end of the day, do I really buy this? Well, Arian Foster admits that it wasn't supposed to be taken seriously. I guess this just got way too much attention for him to be comfortable with because he would go on to say this today on his macro dosing podcast. That's wild. It's it's just so crazy because like I didn't want to be a part of that, honestly. <laughs> I hate going viral for stupid. 
Yeah, but it is funny. It's good for the it show. It is funny. The funnier part of this sh- is the people thinking I'm serious. You want attention, huh? And I'm like, actually, it's PFT that wants the attention. So I didn't even ask for it. Which I find it really funny that Arian Foster is trying to expose someone else for cloud chasing when it was his words originally. Well, I don't know if the clip was taken out of context or like immediately after he played it off as a joke because I only saw that brief clip. But come on, bro. It got out there. It came from you originally. You can yeah. say that you were joking, but don't call someone else a cloud chaser as a result of it. Let yeah. me in the comment section down below you guys think about all this i highly re- that's crazy bro oh i didn't think that they was gonna do that you're a future you as a, a nfl football player and you're talking about the nfl you play in the nfl you don't think that's gonna pop up to people and people will be like oh my god it's really rigged for real for real people are gonna listen all right man let me know down below in the comments man is the nfl rigged for real